Lawrence Stroll, Chairman of Aston Martin Formula One team, thank you for joining us. Um, we've heard some exciting news today that uh, there's new investment in the F1 team. Can you give a bit of background on how that deal came about and what it means for, for the team going forward? Sure. Uh, we've been speaking to Arctos, as you know, as a U.S. private equity firm for a little, uh, a little less than a year. Uh, started with my commercial department. And what Arctos does is they've made minority investments in approximately 30 sports franchises, ranging from the uh, Major League Baseball to NBA to uh, European soccer clubs, et cetera. But most of the focus being in the U.S., and my guys really realize that there's a tremendous amount of commercial synergies and commercial opportunities through the 30 investments they have in these sports teams, um, whether it be sh sharing sponsorship, whether it be whatever, just, just a lot of opportunities. And um, we don't need money. We, we are spending to the budget cap. We are a very profitable business, our Formula One team. But I thought it made sense to give some, bring some added value to sell them a minority of shares to join us in the team. So can we expect to see some exciting ventures between Aston Martin and some of those uh, those American franchises? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. As I say, we've been studying it for a year. We announced the partnership this morning. We certainly haven't kicked anything off, but we will certainly be looking for some synergies and alliances. I appreciate you might not be able to talk about numbers, but uh, some of the uh, financial uh, publications have quoted a valuation of $1.2 billion for Aston Martin following this deal. Um, what, what's been driving that, uh, that, that increase in valuation across all the F1 teams? Uh, the level of excitement from, from the, A, from the fans, B, from the commercial side and the sponsorship that's out there, um, the income we get from FOM, which is a very much a growing business. So all the financial, whether it be sponsorship, whether it be the money we receive from the, the commercial rights holder, whether it be the, the enthusiasm from the fans, whether it be selling product, which has become more popular. It's a combination of many things. As we all know, I don't think there's a bigger growing sport in the world today globally than Formula One. It's certainly on a meteoric rise globally and particularly in this country. If this country was so far behind, there was a lot of low-hanging fruit to catch up to be able to take it where it is today and by bringing three races now. Yeah, I was going to say, the physical representation of, of F1's growth in the U.S. seems to be this race this weekend in Las Vegas. Um, how important is it that this race is a success? And, and what do you think would represent a success for, for Formula One here in Vegas? I think it's already has the feeling of a success. As I walked around the streets last night going for dinner, you feel it in the air. There's a great level of enthusiasm from the fans. I mean, it can't get much more exciting than driving down the strip, qualifying at midnight. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be hard stopping. So I think the excitement's already there. I think it'll be a great event. There's a lot of unknowns. Whenever there's a lot of unknowns in Formula One, you usually have a pretty good event. No teams have any data. As you know, Formula One's a very data-driven business. Um, nobody uh, truly understands what's going to happen with the tires in this very cold temperature that it will get down to at the times that we're going to be on track. So there's a lot of unknowns. When there's unknowns, it brings excitement. Um, I've heard we're going to uh, see your brand, Aston Martin, light up the sphere that we can see behind you in the shot there. Um, you you how, most definitely will. Uh, in terms of marketing opportunities, this race just sounds like it outstrips anything else in, in on the F1 calendar. It, it, it Well, it kind of does for the moment, also because it's the first. I mean, for us, you know, for our road car company, Aston Martin, this is our largest market, is, is the United States. We've, we're doing a lot, brought a lot of activation here this weekend. We've brought hundreds of customers We've our DBX, the 707, the highest performance SUV in the world, will be doing hot laps after qualifying. So we've really spent a lot of our attention activating here. One of those being the sphere, which is, I guess, behind me. So they used to say in the US, uh, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Um, very true. You're getting very close to winning. Um, how far away do you, do you think that is realistically? And I mean, you've made no, uh, no secret of your desire to win titles. So uh, how no. far away is Aston Martin from that? I think it's a couple of years. I said it's a five-year journey to get there. We're three into it. Uh, we, you know, we've just recently completed part of our brand new campus, the best facility ever built in Formula One. One remaining piece to be built, which is already underway and will be completed next September, is our new wind tunnel. Having your own wind tunnel is very significant to adding performance onto our car. So with the new facilities, with the new wind tunnel, with hiring a lot of the people we've been hiring, 
we're on the way to uh, to be fighting for championships in a couple of years, as I predicted. Yeah, I mean, given the podiums uh, this year, eight so far, obviously, the yeah, very we've strong had, eight, eight, Yeah, w w one out of every three races we've been on the podium, which is, you know, a far cry from where we were last year. So we've already but, made a, a bigger step this year than I ho hoped and thought we were going to do, which is uh, giving me a lot of positivity. But you also sound realistic. So is it, I mean, is it possible for anyone to catch Red Bull in these in these next two seasons before the regulation change in 2026? I think it'll be challenging. Anything's possible. Um, they clearly have a, a, a good leap in front of us. Um, but there's also regulations as how much wind tunnel time they'll get and the other teams will get. Um, the, the regulations themselves are getting much more mature. So that means it'll be harder for them to find more pace, a little easier for the other teams to find more pace. But clearly at the moment, they're certainly very strong. And how hands-on are you in in the running of the team in in making uh, decisions to ensure that you do get to those, those targets you set out? Well, I'm very involved at the management level. I certainly don't pick which front wing we're putting on the car or what tire temperatures we put in, but uh, I'm very involved at the senior management level of the business. I'd like to ask you as well about um, the possibility of an 11th team. Uh, I think you made quite clear recently that F1 doesn't need any more than 10 teams, in, in your opinion. Um, but we've heard recently that Cadillac is upping its potential involvement going forward with engines in 2028. Does that change your opinion at all on, on whether F1 needs an 11th team in Andretti? No, it doesn't. You know, it's, it's really not my decision. It's a decision between the FAA and FOM, our commercial rights holder. But I believe that the business is working great with 10 teams and i'm a firm believer if it ain't broke don't fix it so i think it's right just the way it is so if you're talking to prospective teams coming in would your advice be do what i did buy an existing team rebrand yes, it, 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 exactly exactly i mean it, which is you know you look what audi done audi wanted to come in a sport they bought a team um the right way to come in if you want to enter the nfl today you want to enter NHL hockey, you want to enter any great sports franchise, you got to buy a team. Um, and then it's just a question of money. So I do believe they want to enter, they should buy a team like others have done. Do you like the idea of, of Cadillac coming in one way or another anyway, just because it's such a big brand, especially here in the United States, and you'll have that competition, you'll be there racing against them, obviously trying to beat them? Yeah, I'm not worried from a competitive point of view. To start with a blank piece of paper is a very challenging thing to do in this sport. Take those years of history. But uh, listen, I wish them the best of luck. And, and as I mentioned to you, it's really not my decision. It's up to the uh, FIA and, uh, and FOM, and we'll see what they decide. Okay, can, can we talk about Fernando Alonso and, uh, and his uh, brilliance this year that we've seen behind the wheel? Uh, how important is he to your, to your long-term vision of, of winning championships? Uh, Fernando is very important, long-term, short-term. Uh, Fernando's had a, a, a rebirth in terms of enthusiasm and excitement. I know Fernando for 20 years. I, he's certainly at the top of his game right now in both driving and also dealing with the team and going forward and working on setups with the cars. So Fernando's very, very influential in our team, very much part of our business, and one way or another will always be part of our future. And what's his secret? 42 years old. Still scoring podiums, still racing as hard as he did in Brazil a couple of weeks ago. I think there's one simple word, passion. Major, major passion. This guy just loves to drive and wants to win. And when he sees he has a competitive chance, you know, for us at the moment, winning is scoring a podium every three races. That for us is winning. Um, he, you know, he just lights up. And uh, we, you know, we started the car season with a great car and uh, really got him motivated. And he sees... The new facilities we're building, it's used in the wind tunnel, it's used in the investment I'm putting throughout the infrastructure, and that gives me a lot of confidence. And what, what have you made of uh, Lance this season? I mean, it was quite clear early on that there was a bit of bad luck that seemed to, um, to work against him. And of course, the way the season started with the injury didn't help either. Uh, so, so what have you made of his, his progress through the year? I think Lance has done a great job. Um, it was a very tragic that the, he broke both wrists. So the first four to five races were by all means not easy at all. Um, and then Lance had the worst bad luck of anybody in Formula One. He had eight races where or the team or issues, whether it be a rear wing that was falling off or we put the wrong tires or the wrong front wing or engine blowing up in Jeddah. I mean, I could go on. It's eight races. It's 
That's one out of every three. We've had some sort of mechanical issue or DNF or putting wrong tires or leaving them out in the rain in Zandvoort when everybody came in. So if you add it all up, it's eight races of mishaps. And that doesn't really, so the points don't truly reflect his performance. Uh, look at his performance last weekend in Brazil. I think that was very representative. So what would you expect in, in a normal season? Do you think he's got the potential to to beat Fernando within the same team? Or, or I, I, I believe he has the potential to be at the same level as Fernando, yes. Good. And um, one, one last question, just looking a little bit further forward to uh, Honda joining the team in, in 2026. Very exciting. And is that essential under those new regulations in 2026 to have your own works engine deal? There's never been a Formula One team that has won a world championship that has not had its own works engine. There's never been a Formula One team that's been a customer engine and has won a world championship. That's how essential it is. And with Honda, given the success with Red Bull, do you think you're getting the best of the best? We are getting the best of the best, yes. 100%. Okay, well, best of luck with everything this weekend Thank and you. going forward, Thank of you. course. And uh, hope we speak to you soon. Thank you, Lawrence. Look forward to it. Thank you. Bye-bye.